Today, Bogdan is going to solve a very common JavaScript question our MTs get in live coding interviews. To keep it real, ChatGPT and Copilot are not allowed. Bogdan, I provided you with a starting boilerplate code and automated test. Can you share your screen and let's get going? So what you see there, it's a function called deep equal. And that's what I want you to implement. I want you to implement a deep object function comparison in JavaScript. So this function takes two arguments. Those can be uh, primitives, objects, or arrays in JavaScript and returns true or false if they are equal or not. Uh, we are also going to review a few core fundamentals in JavaScript, such as prototypal inheritance and data, data types in JavaScript. So be ready for that. Okay. So you mentioned we are comparing primitive values, arrays, and objects. And I would assume these objects can be nested. Yes, they can be nested objects. Okay. So in that case for objects, we will probably have to somehow go and run this function on the pretty much all the properties of that objects. It sounds like we will have to do some recursiveness, but for now I won't worry about that. Let me run the test to have them running. Mm -hmm. Okay. That looks very much red right now. Yep. Okay. So I see you comparing numbers, strings, boleans. Um, okay. So I'm going to start just with the base case, which means we won't do any, um, this function won't call itself for now. Um, probably I will lay out a bit the different edge cases. Probably the easiest way to find out if they are not equal is to compare the type of the variable. Basically we look at the type of object A and if it's not equal to the type of object B, then we're just going to return false. And that would be our first kind of our first base case. Okay. Let me check our tests again. Perfect. So that would be our type. That's one of the easiest. The next one, let's go with the, with the next easy one. It's um, primitives. So basically if it's a number or a string or a boolean, and basically that would mean that it's not an object. So none of them, it's an object and none of them. Yeah. None of them, it's an object that should do it. So I'll go ahead and say, if the type of object a is not an object and the type of object B is not an object, then we can run our primitive comparison. So we would assume mm -hmm. here that they are primitives. And I would just return. So basically what do we want to return? So they're not objects. So I could go straight in and return object A equal, equal to object B. That would be our normal JavaScript comparison. Okay. So that was our primitives. Let me check the test really quick. Okay. So a lot of them pass now. We still have a race and objects. I'm not going to focus on that. Okay. It looks like we have tests for dates and numbers with NAN. So let me solve this edge case with the NAN. So. The issue is I, as far as I recall a NAN, it's never equal to a NAN in JS. That means even if we have two numbers that are both not a number, it will always return true. Uh, it will always return false. So I will have to write some custom logic for this edge case where we say, if the object a, uh, actually, let me check if this is a not number. So I'm going to check it's object a, not a number. Um, and so we check if object A is not a number and we check if num num if object B is not a number and we return true because if they're both nones, then, so let me return to, and ideally we make that test case pass. Perfect. Okay. So we got primitives out of the way. The next one would be objects and arrays, but I see here also date objects. That mm -hmm. looks like a bit of a edge case. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to go on with, with arrays right now. Okay. Just to follow our test. So I'm going to try to make this one pass. I'm going to write here arrays just to keep everything clean. Okay. So first of all, we want to check if both of them are arrays. Mm -hmm. And after that, I would check they have the same length because if they don't, then it's clear they're not equal. So we can just stop mm -hmm. there. And then we just want to check, um, basically you, we make a one-to-one -one comparison of each element. So probably use a for loop to compare each item in the array. I would assume in the array, we might have items that are objects or even other arrays. So for the comparison, I will call deep equal again. Okay. I'm going to go in and implement this and we see how that works out. So basically we have array that it's array, which is allows us to actually check that something is an array because arrays are objects in JavaScript. So I'm going to check if object A is an array and if 
object B, it's an array. Perfect. And then we said, okay, let's check if they have the same length. If object A dot linked is not equal equal to object B dot linked, then return false. Okay. So that's number one. And now it looks like false for different arrays and false for different nested arrays. Okay. Now this is when we actually do the for loop. So I'm going to write a for loop. We have our iterator start at zero because the arrays go as far as the length of the array increment by one. And here uh, we want to invalidate. So if it's true, we don't really care, but if dip equal of object A and object B at that position, if they are not equal, so if this is not true, then we stop the whole thing. So we found an element that's not equal. Let me see if that works out. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like it worked. So you are iterating over the array and at primitive level, you are using the same function that you built, the dip equal itself, right? Which already has the capability to test primitives, right? Yes. Or if we find arrays inside arrays, that or, would still ah, Okay. So it, yeah, it's recursion. Yes. I do believe the test might be incomplete here because mm -hmm. if we have objects, so inside, imagine I have an array and then I have objects inside, mm -hmm. it kind of looks like the test didn't cover that. I would expect that to be a false because we still have no object comparison and all mm -hmm. the tests on arrays return true. So I think there's no test for arrays inside, uh, objects inside an array. Um, mm -hmm. maybe we Good. can add that at the end. Nice. Okay. So let's move on with objects. This is where things are a bit more complicated because objects are equal by reference. Unless we're talking about the same object, we'll, it will always return false. And that's why we let's do a key property, uh, check. So we basically check each property of the array if they are equal. And I think we can use deep equal on each property, just like we did with arrays, but we iterate over properties, not can elements. Can you expand a bit, expand a bit on this equal by reference for objects in JavaScript? What does that mean? Um, it basically means that two objects, two objects are only equal to mm -hmm. each other if they are pointing to the same objects in memory. So basically, unless they point to the same variable, they are two different objects. Even if they have the same properties or they look exactly the same, JavaScript says they are different if they don't refer to the same variable. So for example, constant A would not be constant equal to constant B right now in JavaScript. If we write it like this, it will only be equal if we do this. Gotcha. Nice. Cool. So if it refers back to A. Have you question for the people watching us, uh, guys, take note of this one. Perfect. So let's move on with objects. What do I want to do with objects? Well, we want to check if they are objects and not arrays. And then we want to iterate over each property and run dip equal mm -hmm. on it. Okay. So let's start with this one. Basically the type of object A to equal to one sec equal equal to object. And so we just want to check that they're both yeah. objects. Okay. So they're both objects. They are not arrays. So I'm going to copy this. So none of them is an array and they're both objects. So now we go into the auto, the iteration. I'm going to extract the keys of both of them just to necessarily have, it's a bit easier. I think if we have them here, so keys of a, just, it makes statements a bit shorter down the road. This would be object A in the same way, constant keys of B, not very original naming, but I guess we can roll with it. And we get the keys. Oh, these things in programming, naming. Perfect. And now we can even check if the length of those is the same and return false if it's not, because if they don't have the same length in their keys or a, so I could do something like keys a dot length, it's not equal, equal to keys B dot length, mm -hmm. then just return false. Cause that's a, that's an obvious. So you always try to find the easiest way to invalidate the hypothesis that yeah. they Okay. So now we want to iterate over. I will use, I will still use the smartest way to do this, but I'm just going to use, um, that traditional for loop. So why it's less than keys at a dot length and that would be a Y plus plus. Perfect. And what do we want to do here? We want to, if dip equal of Okay. What do we pass to the equal? We want to pass property of object A. So object A of keys of A at I. And pretty much we want the same property of B. 
So object B should have pretty much the same property that we found in A. And if they're not equal, we return false. Okay, so let's see. Okay, that went through. So let me just give you my code really quick. They're not they're objects, not arrays. And if they don't have the same length in the keys array, then false. And then go over each key and compare the property of that key and return false if you find it. Okay, looks like we want, we still have one edge case, which is comparing date objects. This would be a tricky one. I'm probably gonna want to wanna do that before objects. What's the difference with uh, date objects and normal objects in JavaScript? The problem is I think date objects hide um, a lot of the implementation. So there's a lot of hidden keys um, that we cannot find when we do object.keys. And that's where the difference of the date is. So I think if, if we look at this test case, I would assume, let me find a date. I would assume the one that fails is, yeah, there's different dates, but our function says they're the same. Mm -hmm. Because the um, the key or the property that contains this date information, it's hidden in the date object. So when we do object.keys, we can really access it. Mm -hmm. So we need a different way to check for that. Uh, I think one of the easiest ways is to convert the date to strings. First, we need to check check if they are both date objects. Uh, yeah. We cannot use type of. I think we can use something like instance of. So we could do something like object A, it's an instance of date, which basically checks for the prototype. So it looks at the prototype of object A and figures out it's date at any point in the prototypal chain of object A and object B pretty much the same. So we check that object B, it's also an instance of date. Perfect. And if they are both instance of date, then we want to check that they're not equal dates. I think we could do, I'm going to use the suggestions here, maybe get time or to string, for example, should work or to UTC date to, I think they should work. So we both. We, we just want to compare them as strings. Object A to the string should not be equal to object B to object B dot to date string. And then we return false. This will operate there. Okay. Nice. Returns true for new values. We still have a missing test. So, okay. We're not handling null. Uh, okay. I'm going to handle null here. Why? Because null, it's actually of type object. But if we, if they're both null, then, then we just return. Uh, immediately. So it's, it's a bit of an edge case. So I'll say if object A it's equal, equal to null and object B is null, then just return to. I think that might be the last edge case. Let's see. Wow. And voila. Okay. Voila. Nice. Well done, Bogdan. Looks pretty amazing. Cool. What's the, what's the one thing that you would tell developers that face these kind of problems in live coding interviews? You know, what would be the most important pitfalls? you would actually keep in mind as you as you solve this thing cool so you've got it now is there a way we can actually optimize this solution i think arrays are actually objects under the hood in javascript which means we don't really need this extra logic i think i can even take this out and we apply i'm going to comment this line out so this code runs also if they are arrays and there you go it's still passed so can you expand a bit on this idea that um, arrays are actually objects in JavaScript. Um, yeah, sure. So the type, the type of an array in JavaScript, it's object and that like the underlying data structure, it's an object. And if we wanted to have real arrays that then have all these push methods and pop methods, we probably will have to use like more of a native data structure, like a buffer array would probably work in Node.js. Are there any uh, performance implications of this? Um, yes, yeah, so of course, having all these wrappers around the arrays means you lose a lot of performance. And also in many cases, you get the performance of a hash map. Um, of course they are very optimized, but you definitely lose performance. If you had a very um, optimized for memory and performance, I'd probably go for something like a buffer array. So if you have a huge array, you want to store that in memory and you want to store it efficiently, you're better off using something like a native array structure. What would be the pitfalls for a, you know, mid-level, even senior dev, junior dev going to this kind of live coding JavaScript interviews? What would you tell them, hey, uh, you know, look out for this and this thing for you to actually be, be successful and, you know, get the interview to an end because a lot of people actually struggle with just going directly blank, not having a, a mental structure to, to get the problem to an end. Um, sure. So number one, 
as you've seen, I did, even if I've seen this problem before, I mm -hmm. always write pseudocode. The other thing, if you are, some people are mid-level, almost senior, and the biggest mistake there is they'll jump right in and say, oh, I know the solution. And even if I would know the solution, I would still go step by step. And very important, start with simple first. So as you see here, I always start with a simple uh, base case and uh, kind of solve those ones because first of all, that builds confidence when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Cause you're like, you see the test passing. If there's no test, um, I would advise you to write some yourself just um, at the beginning of the interview, but ideally they give you some tests. The moment you make some of them pass, you already feel really good. And that confidence makes you uh, focus more on the problem and not on, oh my God, what am I doing here? So start with the simple parts first. Mm -hmm. And of course, recursion, it's a mental model you want to have uh, kind of not down before the interview. You will not, if you don't know recursion well, you'll not be able to figure this out in the interview. And the last thing I would say is whenever you have things like this that are edge cases, if you don't know it, I kind of, I know JavaScript very well and I know those things I had or this detail with the NAN, you can just ask. But before you ask, if you don't want to look like a junior, just write down your intention, like want to check if, like, if the numbers are NANs. And then, then the interviewer can help you out, but it still looks like you know where you're going. So as you see, I always try to write as much as I can. The reason is they'll hang up the interview and the only thing they have from your performance, it's the impression of you, which will fade away very fast, but also the code you left behind. So the more you write and the more you think in writing, the better. You want to talk out loud, but you also want to write uh, in the same time you are talking out loud. So if you're not touch typing already, make sure you also learn touch typing for the interviews. It's a crucial skill. Okay, folks. So that's a lot of things I would add. Make sure you are writing things down, like Bogdan mentioned. And number two, make sure you also verbalize that because you are not alone, right? And maybe, um, you know, maybe there's, there are a lot of things going into your head. Unless you verbalize them, unless you tell them to the interviewer, uh, they won't know about it. So it will seem like, you know, you're thinking a lot, but you cannot get a lot done, like, which would be a pity because maybe you have those things in your uh, in your mind. And this is something that we work a lot with the developers we coach and we help them actually verbalize these things and, and put in place this structured way when approaching a live coding interview. And, and if you get something out of this video, it's that beyond the implementation of the deep equal, the comparison and the details about the JavaScript language, it's how Bogdan actually approached the interview. We will see you folks in the next one and make sure you subscribe to the Senior Dev channel. And that gives us the strength and energy to make more of these videos and let them come your way. Best of luck if you're interviewing right now, and we will see you in the next one.